How's it going shoppers? Today we're gonna be talking about 10 things I wish I knew before I started Walmart Spark. The title's gonna say 10, but really we're gonna be going over a list of 14. 10 just sounded better for a YouTube title. Anyways, let's get straight into it. I'm gonna have a mixture of some pretty basic stuff that might be helpful for new people. And then a few of these things might still help you even if you've been doing Spark for quite some time. Like they say, you learn new things every day, right? So number one, what is the round robin and when is it? The round robin is basically a scheduled time where Spark will send you orders. For Walmart, it's at the 20 minute mark of almost every single hour until they close. And if you reject one, they'll send you another one in a couple of minutes until they run out of offers. For Sam's Club, the round robin's a little different. I believe it's a 30 minute mark, but this is very helpful to know because because if you're sitting on the app and you just downloaded it and you're not seeing any orders, then you need to wait till the round robin because that's when most people take their orders. All right, number two, we've made a video about this, but if you can't get approved for Walmart Spark, make sure that your insurance is up to date. Sometimes the waiting list is so long by the time they look at your account, your insurance has already expired and renewed. So make sure you guys keep that up to date. Number three, if you guys think you're crazy that you can't find the contact button while you're doing a shop and deliver order, well, you're not. You literally cannot contact a customer during one of those shopping orders. I've tried to figure this out for a long time because support told me I could, but turns out support just doesn't know what's going on. There's no way to contact your customer during a shop and deliver order. You can, however, contact them while you're delivering the shopping order. So use your best judgment on those orders when it comes to replacements and refunds. All right, number four, you can contact support in two different ways. You can contact support via text and you can contact support via the phone. If you're in the middle of an order, I highly suggest giving them a call, but just know that you're gonna have to give a bunch of personal information as soon as you start the phone call. They usually make you verify your name, email, and phone number, and it gets a little awkward seeing all that personal information while you're in a busy store. But the phone support actually seems pretty good, and usually there's not a huge wait time. So to access it, press the dots on the bottom right, go to help, and then at the very bottom, there is the phone call option and then chat on the top. All right, so for number five, this is one I wish I knew when I started. There is a cold timer for when you guys take items that are refrigerated and put it into your cart and scan it. They automatically start a timer and I believe it's an hour from when you scan that in, it has to be delivered. It might be a little bit more, and recently they just launched an update that helps explain the new delivery window when you guys do scan one of those. If you miss the delivery window, when you scan a cold item, then they'll remove the order from you. This happened to me a while back, and this was before they made it very obvious. I scanned some bell peppers that were on the produce wall, and apparently those counted as a refrigerated item. The order was 80 items, and most of them were refrigerated or frozen. So by the time I got to my car, they just canceled the order and I was left with a cart full of stuff that I had to awkwardly return. At least they explain it better now, but it's very helpful to know how that works. All right, so number six, if you guys are having problems scanning a label, it does give you the option to enter the UPC and the quantity of how many you're getting. But this could be very time consuming, especially if you're dyslexic like me and it's really hard to read those numbers then what you guys can do is screenshot it on your phone and on Apple, you guys could actually hold the text on the picture and it'll copy the text. And then you just paste it in. Only do this if you're positive it's the right item. I'm sure there's some way to do this on Android as well. If you use Android, let me know if that works. All right, so for number seven, round robin orders are the only ones that affect your acceptance rate, or at least that's what I've been told. So ignoring those express orders won't hurt your account. So for number eight, make sure that you guys click start your trip. If you guys are pretty far away from the store and you got a decent order, start the trip immediately because they might start sending you this notification that says you're at risk of losing your order if you don't start your trip. Usually once you start it, you have a pretty long time to actually begin your order. Once I was 20 minutes late to their suggested arrival time for a shopping order and I still got the order. I was kind of worried that they would take it away, but everything was fine. You just need to keep in mind if you guys are late to dropping it off, that will impact your account. They have a little metric for that on your account. All right, so for number nine are those stickers. If you guys ever lose one of the stickers, I've been able to call support in the past and have them give me the code to manually enter. So it's not necessarily the end of the world if you miss a sticker, but it's definitely gonna slow you down a lot and you'll probably miss the next round robin. And keep in mind, you scan these stickers when you guys are picking up, 
and you scan them while you're dropping off. And at my store, I only have to do one sticker per customer. All right, so for number 10 is how to actually get paid. Walmart Spark makes this kind of weird. You guys have to set up a branch account, which is basically just another bank account. And then they will deposit all of your money into branch. And then you can take that money and put it wherever you want in your normal bank account. But they should give you an email to actually activate your branch account so that you could access your money and they pay you on Tuesdays, once a week. All right, so for number 11 is how to check for tip bait. Now this was something I really wish I knew because I was doing this all wrong at first. So what I used to do is I'd go to trips and I'd click completed and I'd look at my orders and all the pay would stay the same. This is not the way to check for tip bait. To check for tip bait, you have to go to earnings, go to one of your days and click on one of your orders. So as you guys could see, this order used to be 20 plus dollars and now it is 13. I got tip baited, but that was just because of Spark's weird $5 tip glitch. All right, so for number 12, sometimes you might miss a notification for an incentive. So make sure you guys always check your incentives in the morning. Go to the bottom right of the app and just click incentive programs. Then they'll show you some extra bonuses that you could try to complete to make some extra money. Usually these are really good with Spark. For number 13, we're gonna be talking about wait time. If you guys wait longer than 30 minutes to pick up your order, then Spark should pay you $2.50 and you should see this in your earnings tab. Sometimes people will wait 30 minutes for an order, drop it, and then accept it again to get the $2.50 and surge pay on the order, but this is really risky, especially with how many people are using the platform. The chances of you actually accepting your order again are pretty low. All right, in number 14, we're gonna be talking about those dot-com orders. I would suggest staying away from them unless if they're $2 per mile, and I've very rarely seen any that are $2 per mile. These usually seem to be closer to $1 per mile, and that doesn't include the trip back to Walmart. You usually don't get as many tips with that. I usually prefer doing normal curbside and shopping orders because you guys get better customer tips that way. Anyways, those are 14 things I wish I knew about Walmart Spark before I started. Make sure you guys drop a like down below if this video helped you. Also consider subscribing for more content like this and I'll see you guys on the next video.